Hello everyone. So today uh, we're going to be looking at an IB English A Language and Literature Paper 1 text and I'm going to be running you through how to plan your answer for Paper 1 uh, and also how to actually deliver that answer. I'll show you a sample answer. So this is mainly aimed at language and literature but if you are doing literature uh, the same kind of planning theory applies so hopefully this will be useful for you. So this is the text we're going to be looking at. Um, it's called First Dog on the Moon. It's a cartoon by an Australian chap. Um, you can see the actual link at the bottom if you want to see the original cartoon and go through it. Uh, you can pause the screen now if you'd like to read the actual text before we get into the planning stage. So the first page there. And second page. Second panels. So it's all about a discovery of, um, of water on Mars and also elsewhere in the universe. And then it comes back to look at the kind of Earth issue of uh, not having enough clean water and sanitation. And the final panels are here. Okay, so that's the, that's the text. Um, with the new paper one, uh, you'll get a guiding question that you need to focus on for your answer, or you can choose your own point of entry, but you have to have a specific focus for your question. You can't just analyze the whole text. So this particular guiding question is here. How do the various cartoon techniques help establish tone and meaning? So there's a few keywords there I want to focus on. Clearly cartoon techniques is a text type, one of the text types you need to know for paper one. So you need to understand about panels, frames, gutters, all this kind of good stuff. Um, have to be able to explain that specifically. Uh, and also obviously it talks about tone and meaning. So that's going to be my focus in my answer. Okay. Now before I go on and show you my planning, I should point out that obviously this is to help you with an answer. If you're given this particular text to look at, then you absolutely cannot use this answer. Um, that would come under academic integrity rules. Um, so but hopefully this, if you've done the text or you're looking for general plans for paper one, this may be of use. So just, just bear that in mind. Okay, so planning your answer, I would I tend to plan it like this. First thing is to really think about the guiding question. That has to be front and center all the way through your answer. What I then do is look to break up the text into what I call chunks of meaning. So whichever panels for this comic strip work together, I'm gonna to look to join them together and concentrate them as one chunk and talk about that in one section, okay? Once I've done that, I'm gonna give each of those chunks a heading or a headline that sums up what's happening and why that chunk is important. And that's going to be useful later on when I want to show, I want to show how the text develops. Um, and also when I want to start talking about that particular chunk in my answer, uh, then I can use that heading and transform that into like an opening sentence or a, a topic sentence. It's really useful. Okay. Um, once I've done that, um, the last thing is to pick um, a few examples, usually three or four is enough from each of the chunks. Um, and actually explain and show how those examples explain that your heading is true or is correct. Okay. Um, obviously when you're writing, don't call them chunks, call them sections. Okay, so this is how I broke up this particular, um, this particular text. You can see chunk one up here um, is the top section, the header. Um, and my heading is the stand first introduces the topic in a newspaper style. Stand first is the opening headline um, that it uses. It looks like a newspaper style. And that's really what the first section does. A couple of examples there. There's a formal tone, um, which is kind of undermined a bit by the use of the phrase, slang phrase, cooties. Where I put GQ, that just means I'm referring directly to the guiding question. Okay, so you can work your way through the other panels there. Um, again, this is the next headline. Uh, panels one to three introduce a topical issue about space discovery, some scientific jargon, a bit of a cheeky tone. Again, that links to the guiding question and a few of the cartoon techniques, which is also part of the guiding question that I need to talk about. And then same thing, chunk three, the fourth and fifth panel, I think I've put together, becomes a bit more critical. And then the, the final chunk at the end here, the last panel is quite important, I think. Uh, you've got this unusual checklist um, and makes the text very political by the end is not no longer just about space discovery. So that's kind of how I would how I would initially plan my my answer. I mean you see all of these chunks all have a link to the guiding question. They're not a general summary of the whole thing. Right, so this is my overall structure. Uh, I start with an start obviously with an introduction. 
specifically answer the guiding question. I'm going to mention the text type um, and, and basically signpost where this is, essay is going to go. Um, I like to include what I call a big picture par, which gives everybody the big picture, gives your examiner the big picture. And that means talking a little bit about context, not too much because the new paper one doesn't require it. But if you can link that to the guiding question, talk about the purpose, then it can be very useful. And for criterion A, the overall understanding of the text, um, especially useful before you dive into the, the close reading. So then you, then you use those chunks that I mentioned before, um, the opening chunk here. I'm going to use that heading to now create a topic sentence, the opening of that paragraph. And then I'm going to weave in the examples that I mentioned as well and show how they prove that this heading is true. And I do the same thing all the way through. I try and transition, which means a link from chunk one into chunk two, and then from chunk two into chunk three and so on. So that also helps me with criterion C, which is organization and focus. And then in conclusion, I go back and show how I've proved, proven my answer to the guiding question is correct, basically. Nothing new in the conclusion, just wrap it up. Okay, so that's my overall structure, and I recommend this very much for language and literature, and even actually for literature, this, this works um, pretty well, I think. Okay, so let's, let's move on, have a look at the, the actual answer. And again, obviously, as a, as a reminder, you can't use this um, for your own answer. This is just for helping you to study. So the piece is in bold. The words in bold are my comments to help you understand what's happening here. Okay, so introduction, online cartoon, discusses the 20, 2015 announcement about water being found on Mars. goes beyond scientific discoveries, though, as it also uses irony to mock human efforts to provide enough water for people on Earth. So clear summary of what's actually happening and also shows me more about the deeper meaning of the text. In terms of the guiding question, really useful to have this phrase so the examiner knows exactly what to look for. The cartoon uses unusual labelling, anthropomorphism and sarcasm to criticise the wastefulness of human resources. I think that sums up pretty much what's, what's happening there. I've got the tone in there, I've got the techniques um, and the overall meaning. And then some signposting before I go on, just to show where this is going to head. Uh, we'll now show how the text starts with a focus on the newsworthy discovery of water on Mars and then shifts in tone to more cynically comment on humanitarian concerns. Okay, so that, that shows where it's going next. Okay. Big picture paragraph, um, I'll let you read through this. Uh, and as I said, this, this gives you an overall picture of what's, what's happening here. Um, some phrases there you may like to use. Context of composition is what the writer was thinking about, but what was their, their concerns at the time. Um, obviously it's a topical story he's referring to. And the context of interpretation is how the reader is going to receive the text. Um, we'd assume they understand cartoon technique um, also the irony and the fact that cartoons as a text type often have these light-hearted facades or faces that actually conceal a more critical message. So uh, that's also useful because it shows I understand the text type in general. Comment about theme, and thematically, helps the examiner see immediately what I'm going to be talking about. And here I want to talk about more abstract ideas. So our inability to be self-sufficient, um, that kind of thing I can, I can use. Okay. Right, then I'm going to move on to the, the chunks. And you can see my opening chunk. Cartoon initially begins by using newspaper tropes, tropes are typical features, to introduce the recent discovery on Mars. Now that's pretty much a longer version of the heading I gave chunk one, if you remember. And so I've just expanded that, nice and simple. And I know I'm showing the examiner which part of the text I'm talking about, and off I go. So after I've done that, I want to start talking about a few examples to show it's got this newspaper-like font. Um, and it looks like a newspaper, it's got this subheading, um, and it has a, a feel of a newspaper heading, but it's undermined by these phrases like, will it be contaminated by earth cooties? Because curties, cooties you wouldn't expect to find in a newspaper article, it's much more um, childlike term. So immediately that changes the tone a little bit, which brings me back to my guiding question. Um, then talks about the, the stand first, um, and the, the narrative text there talks about delicious sounding salty aquifers and sciencey questions. Those are good examples. They're linked together and they create this humorous childlike mood. A little bit about how um, Malton breaks with convention by putting Mars outside of the main panels. That shows I understand the text type conventions. It's unusual to do that. And the dogs are asking questions about the planet, um, which again links the image and the text together. 
Um, and then this last sentence here is like a link that links it all together. This initial section therefore uses unconventional cartoon techniques to present the central topic, which at this stage is about the discovery of water on Mars. Suggests obviously this is not always going to be about this topic. Okay, so next one, next start of the next chunk, I want to um, transition and link this a little bit with the previous chunk. So having established the topic, Martin then begins to criticise humans for their incompetence. So the first part here, having established the topic, is reminding me about chunk one, and then I go in to talk about what's happening in chunk two. Okay. And then more examples here, you can pause and read through these if you, if you wish to. Okay, I'm just working my way through here, talking about the lobsters and the super duper spacoscope. Quite funny kind of tone, which is in contrast to the more scientific language that he uses. And in, into chunk three. So now I'm talking about the tone shifting dramatically from the previous panel into this one, which is the tone is also part of the guiding question. Again, pretty simple topic sentence, certainly no more than two lines. Uh, sum up, just sum up briefly where this is going to go and then go there. Okay, so you can see again, um, some examples working my way through here. Again, you can pause this if you want to read the, the whole thing. And there we go, chunk three there. And then chunk four, very similar. Um, now moving into the more political message behind the, behind the text. Um, again, more, more examples, um, especially the, the checklist at the bottom. There's a lot of things you could talk about there because even the positive things that they list are actually not positive when you when you look at them. And they're going to finish by referring back to the guiding question at the end there as well. And then chunk five is my conclusion. So fairly short and sweet. Um, discusses a recent news event in a pseudo-scientific way, explaining the discovery, but then discussing wider issues and implications. Um, subvert some cartoon tropes by using comic labelling and the placing of images outside of frames. Uh, again, that shows I understand the, the techniques which the guiding question asks me. Then the final sentence, I want to try and finish strong with your final sentence. Ultimately, although the cartoon is initially about the discovery of water elsewhere in the universe, Malton's treatment of a more earth-based crisis is rather dry. Dry, um, linking to water there, obviously. Um, so a nice, nice kind of way to, to finish off, I think. Okay, so I hope that's hope that's useful. If you did find it useful, please feel free to subscribe. We'll do, be doing more looks, looking more at this and also uh, other parts of the IB and other text analysis um, as we go along. Thanks very much.